We've got some major Nintendo news to discuss regarding the Zelda 35th anniversary, a potential Nintendo Direct at E3 2021, and more. So to start off, we have some trademarks from Nintendo that have been making the rounds in the community, and it's led a lot of people in the community to speculate that these are the games we could get for the Zelda 35th anniversary. It's been somehow discovered that Nintendo filed a new trademark in Australia late last year for the 2007 DS release of The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. And we also see a trademark for Wind Waker as well. And these trademark filings were officially accepted on the 24th of November. This information comes from Kilios FR and he posted a tweet that he said that I don't know why, but I feel like this is going to be the Mario 35th anniversary all over again with three Zelda games in a collection plus Breath of the Wild at the end of the year. So we're going to dive into my theories, but first and foremost, I want to say that Nintendo does constantly update their trademarks like all the time. So I don't want to get our hopes up too much, but it would be super insane to see like a win Wind Waker, a Phantom Hourglass, and a Spirit Tracks collection for the 35th anniversary. It would be very difficult for Nintendo to do a port of Phantom Hourglass to the Nintendo Switch due to all of the DS features that it had. So it could be that we just get a full remake, which would be absolutely insane. I could easily see Nintendo doing a Triforce collection that's based off of the Wind Waker trilogy. Nintendo always finds super unique ways to launch their games that they previously released. For instance, the 3D World plus Bowser's Fury was super unique unique they added a bunch of changes to it but for this they do a wind waker trilogy obviously they port the wii u version of wind waker to the nintendo switch because they're good at wii u ports and then they take phantom hourglass and do a full redesign for it and give it to us with spirit tracks all in a wind waker trilogy now in my opinion that's not really the safest bet for nintendo but nintendo has been known to not really take the safe bets their best option currently is just to go ahead and release ocarina of time majora's mask maybe give us twilight princess or wind waker hd all in a bundled Triforce collection. And then they give us the HD remaster of Skyward Sword. That's literally been my speculation, but Nintendo could definitely throw us this curveball with a Wind Waker trilogy, and I would be just as happy. Or they could make everyone happy and release both collections throughout the rest of the year, and they end things off with Breath of the Wild 2. Now that leads to our next topic and pretty big news. It's no secret that the year 2020 left a bad taste in everyone's mouth for the video game side of things, from delays to unfinished games to minimal to no conventions and more but 2021 is really shaping up to be a much better improvement of a year compared to 2020 we have a new hope the entertainment software association announced last year that they would go digital for e3 2021 which will take place between june 15th to the 17th every summer since 1995 e3 has taken place in the u.s and is one of the most anticipated events of the year to show off announcements reveals and trailers for new games accessories and systems from a report from VGC, we know that the three-day event will have live streamed coverage from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. EST, including two hour-long keynote presentations from game partners from around the world. In recent years, Nintendo has decided to take the pre-recorded route instead of a live showcase, and that's where the Nintendo Directs were born. Last year, Nintendo decided to play their own route, and even despite E3 not happening, they even opted out of showing anything at Summer Games Fest featured events. Nintendo decided to do what they always do by hosting their own directs throughout the year and none of them were very large at all there unfortunately were no larger nintendo directs that we had grown to love that announced many large AAA games as animal crossing had been announced in 2019 and there was a decent sized 35th anniversary mario direct but even that wasn't as crazy hyped up as many people would hope they would be even now it's looking pretty dull because of the delay in opening super nintendo world but as i have mentioned very recently i truly believe that february is shaping up to be a huge month for Nintendo with the 25th anniversary of Pokemon and the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. And we can't forget the 35th anniversary of Metroid either. Lots of speculation for these series from new games and the recent leaks that have kind of backed them up. But just for a second, let's talk like there's nothing planned for any of those series. Could we see a delay and Nintendo just hold off any announcements until E3 2021? I certainly think it could be possible. The only reason why I believe this could happen, even though I really don't want it to, is simply because Nintendo Nintendo doesn't like to announce new games and even new consoles relatively way ahead of time before the actual release dates of those games. Unless Nintendo wants to be the ultimate tease, especially with Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4, and we can't forget Bayonetta 3. The speculated games to possibly have a release window in the year of 2021 are potentially a lot of
of big hits in the Nintendo world. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes, as we most likely won't hear about the new generation of Pokemon games until next year. Pokemon Let's Go Johto, or whatever placeholder name it could be, and that is if that game even exists. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. For this, we have waited a very long two years for, as this game was first shown off at the last Nintendo E3 that they attended in 2019. The leaked Legend of Zelda 3D Collection, or Triforce Collection, that's been rumored for the anniversary, or we could call it the Wind Waker Collection, whatever you guys decide to call it. Metroid Prime 4, which were promised months ago that we were eventually getting news for sooner rather than later. Metroid Prime Trilogy that was also rumored for a anniversary this month. And I hate to say it, but where is Bayonetta 3? If the game got canceled, they need to just tell us at this point so I can stop getting excited about it. But hey, the developer did say we should stop thinking about it, so we probably should continue to stop. Also, as previously mentioned very recently, is that Nintendo doesn't have any plans to release a Nintendo Switch Pro console, which depending on the verbiage could certainly have been taken in a way that didn't sound like the beginning of this year due to a Nintendo's investor call at the end of January. Nintendo mentioned it doesn't plan on announcing any new Switch consoles since they have a special edition Mario console releasing, which will be alongside Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury in just a few days and a special edition Monster Hunter console bundle releasing in March. But I personally think that after Monster Hunter console does launch, it's open season for speculation for a new and upgraded version of the Nintendo Switch. Sony and Microsoft had a killer end of 2020 year despite consoles selling out just about everywhere. Nintendo eventually will have to think of a way to compete with these higher end consoles to try to maintain sales figures. And I truly believe that E3 2021 could be that time. Imagine for a second, a huge E3 showcase and we had a load of AAA games such as Pokemon remakes, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2, Metroid Prime 4, a new 3D Mario platform or Super Mario Odyssey 2, and a bunch of new cross-platform AAA games from Microsoft and Sony, all to play on your Nintendo Switch Pro releasing holiday 2021. Honestly, I just hope that Nintendo doesn't waste the potentially good month that February is. It's primed to be a big month for anniversaries from their top level games, but I think if they announce them all together, even through the direct format that we've grown accustomed to, I don't think there's anything stopping Nintendo in 2021. I think that most Nintendo fans deserve it after a very slow 2020, and I truly believe that Nintendo is ready to pull out all of the stops for an astonishing year. Thank you guys all once again for watching. This has been Wes, and I will talk to you on the next video.